So today I'm going to be showing you how you can wire up EPCO elevator buttons. Now this is an SSL type fixture, but that doesn't really matter because if you look at the back, you'll notice this type of base. And if I get another EPCO button that looks different from the front, you'll see it also has the same base on the back. Taking one of the buttons apart is easy enough, just pull all the pieces off. And here we have the button cap portion. Now the white piece you'll see is common between all the EPCO buttons, it's just the cap that's changed out. And like I said before, the base is the same on all of them. You'll notice here there are two separate contacts, so there's two independent switches on each base, and the button simply presses those down and completes the circuit. As for the lamp, there is this small handle on the back, and pulling on that reveals the little lamp, which is held in the little plastic container, but there's where the lamp goes. Pulling the bulb out and looking at it, you can see this is a PSB type bulb. So I'm going to be showing you two different ways you can wire these buttons. The first one is if you have access to PSB type bulbs and you want to use incandescence. And the second is if you want to use LEDs. However, you'll have to have a resistor as well. So the first method is using a PSB type bulb and the original lamp holders. For this project, you will need to acquire some sort of PSB bulb. In my case, I'm using a 6 PSB bulb. And now the 6 stands for 6 volts. And you'll see there's all kinds of different voltages. So you'll want to choose one that works with your voltage source. So in my case, I'm going to use a 9 volt battery. So they don't make 9 PSBs, but 6 is close enough so we can do that. If let's say your voltage source was 24 volts, you would want a 24 PSB. First you want to pull out the old bulb and replace it with your new one. And then it's time to get started with the wiring. So I'm going to be following this schematic for my particular button. And this schematic is available on my website. So in this video, I'm wiring a intermediate call station, but the same wiring method applies to any amounts of buttons. You could have one button, two buttons, or even 20 buttons, and it'll still work. Everything's wired in parallel. The first step is to connect the positive end of your voltage source, in my case, the battery, to one of the ends of the contacts of the button. In this case, you can see it's the top left. And then the negative end gets connected to one end of the lamp. Now for this method, the polarity doesn't really matter because it's an incandescent bulb, but when we do method two with the LED, it does matter. So just hook it up to this end for now. And then all that's left to do for a single button is just connect a small wire between the other end of your lamp and the other end of the button contact. So this will make it when you push the button in, it completes the circuit and allows current to flow through the lamp. If you only have one button, you're done. But if you have another button, you pretty much need to do the same thing, but on the other button. So for each button you add, you'll want to add the little wire that connects the button contact to the lamp, just like we did on the first one. And you'll also need a couple of wires that you can connect the power from the original button to the other buttons. So you'll connect the positive from the first button to the same spot on the second one, and the same with the negative. Connect the wire from the negative of the first button to the negative of the second one. And continue this process until all of the buttons are wired. And it should look something kind of like this. Now method 2 will follow the exact same type of wiring as method 1, however instead of using the incandescent PSB bulbs, we're just going to be using a very standard LED. However, in order to use the LED, you will also need to add a resistor into the circuit to limit the current that flows to the LED, because you don't want to burn it out. So if you don't know how to figure out the resistor value that you'll need, you can head over to my website and use my convenient calculator that I made. Simply enter the input voltage, in my case 9 volts, then the current through the LED, in this case 20 milliamps, and then finally the voltage drop of your LED. And this is going to vary based on the color of LED. Since I'm using a white one, it's about 3 volts. For this, you'll want to take out the lamp holders, as we won't be using them. So the wiring for this is essentially the same, except we're using an LED, and instead of a wire between the contact and the bulb, we're using the resistor. First thing to do is to locate the positive and negative end of the LED, and the negative end can be identified by the shorter pin and the flat side on the same side of the LED. Simply bend both ends of the LED 90 degrees opposite of each other. Something kind of like this. Stick the ends of the LEDs underneath the screws that are on the lamp connections. So instead of using a wire that connects the contact and the lamp together, we're using the resistor. This will limit the current and work as a connection between these two parts. And simply tighten everything down and repeat this same process for every button that you have. So that was a little tutorial on how to wire up EPCO elevator buttons. I hope you found this useful. And again, all of the resources that I used are available on my website. There is a link down in the description. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you learned something and enjoyed it. And we'll see you guys next time.